Hey everybody, so there's a bit of echo in here and I apologize for that, but this trip should not have happened. Multiple times things went wrong, but I made it here to Colombia and I am so excited to be here. Learning Spanish quickly. Um, I've quit smoking and caffeine recently, so I'm very exhausted, especially just from how stressful the flight was. Um, I'm now, this is the second day I've been here. Um, I arrived the night before yesterday, so arrived, crashed, woke up and spent some time with my friend Francis, which you'll see little clips of in these videos, and she took me around town and we just had a blast, honestly. Um, I have just scratched the surface been here two days on how much there is to do in this city. Medellin is huge. So I'm from Orlando currently and Orlando has half the population of what's here. There's three million people sprawled across a mountain range. It's incredible. Um, so what happened was I was already cutting my money very close and I started by going to the passport office in Miami, which was an expedite office. Um, it's a state building, it's a, like official government building where if you go in and pay like an extra $60 fee, they make it the same day. And that's only in Miami, like Houston, New York, only like the biggest cities of the United States. So I structured my flight very carefully to be able to get an appointment there. Um, I had to buy one exactly two weeks away, the flight, and then I had the appointment at 7 a.m. the same day of my flight. So I left at 3 a.m. from Orlando to Miami. I uh, woke up at 7 p.m. the day before, so I had a lot of sleep. Um, got to the um, passport agency, got in, and then had to burn like four or five hours walking around Miami until I got my passport. Uh, at noon, which was insane. So they make it in five hours. Then made my way to the airport. And upon arrival at the airport, after spending, you know, about 260 bucks for gas and buying a passport for 225, um, I had kept my debit card locked to avoid like subscriptions, bills, anything I didn't expect taking money out of my account. And I found out that the second I unlocked my car to buy the passport, I have three bills that I didn't even think were near due come out of my account, um, like a chiropractor payment, um, food subscription service, uh, a year subscription to Duolingo. So I lost 240 bucks there, which really hurt because of how close I was cutting it. I already paid for my stay here, I paid for the flights, everything I thought that I needed, um, and the dollar is worth so much here that I figured with two to four hundred dollars and um, getting more money incoming in a few days, I would be fine. Um, but as it turns out, basically I got to the airport and I need to have a return flight, which this is my first time ever leaving the country, I didn't know that. I had bought a one-way ticket before, and the only return flight I could find within range of when I would want to come home was um, about 150 bucks, which is cheap, but my ticket here was 60 So, um, last minute, all of these things I had to pay for, I had to pay $80 to check in a bag, not 40 or 50 like I expected. Basically, I ran completely out of money. So, um, I ended up having literally just a friend send me $100 to make it here. So, I went straight to the currency exchange once I got here, got pesos, and I'm okay now. I have more money incoming, but I ran out. Like, I would not have had the money to get a taxi to my apartment that I rented. I cut it so close. Now, what's also crazy is after the flight here, and I'm just shocked that I've actually made it here and everything worked, I get to immigration, um, I have everything ready, my passport, my vaccine card, everything. I desperately did not want to get the vaccine, but 
gave in eventually. And I hand the officer my vaccine card and he asks me for a negative COVID test. And I was really confused and just told him, you know, no necessito, I was told I only need a vaccine card. And I was not aware, did not read, did not see anywhere, was not told that you need to have your second vaccine for 15 days before you travel. And I had gotten it just a few days before. After going through a bunch of hoops to even get a replacement vaccine card, since I had my wallet stolen when I first moved to Florida. So basically one of my only friends here that I met through social media, Francis. Almost that. This is crazy. Um, this is great. He pulled a girl from the line to use as a translator and she told me, um, is there anyone here, she asked, that you know whatsoever that could potentially help convince him to get you in? So I called Francis, <laughs> but I haven't even met yet in person. And basically she pretended to be my fiance and said that we had all of these plans out and she was like, please, no, don't, uh, she was like, don't send the love of my life home. And she just made up all of this bullshit. It was so hilarious. And, uh, <laughs> he stamped my passport and waved me on, literally broke the law to let me in. He just didn't care. They were going to send me home on the next flight. I know what I've had to pay for it. So, two, two times I should not have made it to this country, and I still did. Absolutely crazy to me. Then I get here, um, people I've been talking to through Tinder and such before I came um, told me what to expect, and they said that it would be exactly 90,000 pesos from the airport to my apartment. And I walk down the escalator after getting a hundred dollars worth of pesos, which is about 400,000 pesos here. Um, uh, this man immediately was like, hey, you need a taxi? I was like, I do need a taxi, yes. And he asked where I was going. I asked the price, Quanta Costa. There's a lot of motorcycles here, it gets loud. And you said 90,000. So um, two different people told me it was exactly 90,000 to get from the airport to Medellin. And that was the price. I hopped in his like 2018 Buick and we just took off. He took me on a really uh, scenic route, which I had just a couple brief clips of, but so much has happened since I got here, and I've also slept for like 30 hours. Oh my god, guys, I really fucking made it. I cannot begin to explain how difficult this trip was, and how many loops I had to go through to make it here and how many times I did not think I was going to make it here, but I made it here. It has been the longest two days. Holy crap, but the place is nice. I can't believe I made it. I've got a cute little kitchen, seating area, mini fridge, TV, shower, bathroom, another couch. I have never seen a city like
like this. I cannot record this well on my iPhone, but Jesus Christ, there's just three million people built onto mountain ranges. This doesn't exist in the States. I was up for two days before I came here, slept both nights, hard as a rock, and then I just slept all day till 7 p.m. And I'm about to crash again, it's 2 a.m. now. After I edit this, because I'm paragliding in the morning, I'm getting picked up around 9.30 a.m. So there's so much happening, even though I have no money. Um, I have something coming in a couple of days, I have enough to eat here, since most meals cost one or two dollars, and they're very good quality. Um, there's an app here called Rappi, which is a lot like DoorDash, except in total, okay, the most I paid for two pizzas from Domino's was $15. And I ordered like a burrito earlier for $3. Delivered with a tip. So DoorDash back home is not practical. I to spend like 40 to 50 bucks. Here, it's nothing. And I walked around the town earlier and got two smoothies for my friend and I for $4. Amazing smoothies next to the subway inside of a mall. Um, I got jewelry with her, which I'll show a clip of. These are handmade by a guy from Peru for three to five dollars each. So we got like five things for 15 bucks. Um, it's amazing how inexpensive it is here. Now, I came here to help me learn Spanish faster, also because I read that Colombia is somewhat safe for tourists, and really, yeah, I can see that. There were so many, as always, when you research something, there's so many mixed um, opinions. Right, and nobody is giving me a second look, even with blue hair. <laughs> like, nobody's even giving me a second look, and I've seen like two or three Americans. That's it. Very few tourists so far, but people are used to it anyway. And yeah, I'm picking up Spanish really quickly, I'm excited. So I came here to learn Spanish fast uh, because it was inexpensive and because I've always wanted to travel. And I get to go paragliding tomorrow for 80 bucks, where it would have been 500 in the States. It's way more developed and beautiful here than I had any idea it would be. Like, I am actually shocked. And I love it. And if I could work remotely, I would stay here for two or three months at a time. My only complaint is I did not check if my Airbnb had air conditioning, and it does not. But it's really nice anyway. It's just like 76 in here. So I'm like on the verge of sweating but not going to. And it's taking some adjusting because I'm already very lightheaded. And with all the sweating, I'm just more dehydrated. So yeah, I'm just trying to stay cool and drink a lot of water because I get really lightheaded from the heat. Anyway, I'll show some clips of what I've seen so far, and I'm gonna keep posting vlogs. I'm gonna record a lot about the paragliding tomorrow. Um, I'm recording on a 2022 SD that I just bought for this trip. Literally just a little iPhone. I was really impressed with the camera quality so far though. Um, I didn't want to use anything crazy expensive while I was here, but I think it's better than a GoPro or something else. But yeah, if you watched all the way through this, thanks for keeping track. This is going to be a great trip. I'm here for nearly five weeks, so I'm going to keep everybody updated. So, thanks.